Um, I think I'm live. This is my first live um, Facebook. So welcome, welcome. Is there anybody out there? I, um, I haven't been to the hairdresser in a while. So this is my real uh, mustache and my real eyebrows. Um, <laughs> and my real hair color. Um, and I have my friend James with me. So uh, I might be a little bit early, but I just want to make sure. Oh, there's Megan and Andy. Hey, how are you? How are you guys doing? Um, so I'm going to give it a couple minutes before I start with uh, introductions. Some of you might not recognize me since I um, haven't had my eyebrows done and my mustache waxed in a while and my um, real hair color is starting to come out. So um, it's a little grown out a little bit too. So you might not recognize me. I miss you too, Megan. Oh my God, I miss everybody so much. Um, but I do have my um, friend James here with me. This is uh, Cape Cod Firefish Masters number one. Uh, I can't see you, no, I can't see you, but can you see me? Oh, you see my friend James. All right, so I think we're ready to get started. Um, I'm just kidding about the um, hair color. Um, and yeah, I'm just kidding about the eyes too. <laughs> so hello everybody, but I do still have my friend James with me. So um, welcome, welcome to happy hour. Ah, I got my um, Schweppes sparkling water with me um, for my happy hour and I put my pearls on and my good earrings for you all. Uh, if you don't know me, I am Trish Cundiff. I am the um, owner and director of AquaSafe Swim Programs. We are the home of the Cape Cod Firefish USA Swim Team and uh, Swim Lessons and most importantly, the uh, uh, um, coach of the home of the Cape Cod Firefish Masters Swimming Program. Yo! I love you guys and I miss you so much. Um, you can uh, just Google my name and find out more about me. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Once you get past the criminal history, there's some <laughs> triathlon um, information. <laughs> Hi, Nicoletta. How are you? Um, so I would first off like to just let you know what we are going to talk about. Um, the three most important things you can do while you're out of the pool is to work on your flexibility, to work on your core, and to work on your early vertical forearm. Right, James? See, he's 100% he's with me. That's why we call him number one. And I know everyone is stressing out about not being in the water. I get that. I'm stressing out. It's, it's my calm and happy place. And... Um, you get a good workout, but you, I promise you, if you do some of the, um, the uh, dry land training that I'm talking about, you can make more gains with technique than you can with swim fitness. And I know everyone is stressing out with no pools and the water's too cold for open water swimming, but this actually, honestly, might be the best thing that ever happened to your swimming because you are gonna be forced to take the time to focus on technique. Not like in practice when I'm talking about technique and you're like, when's she gonna shut up so we can start swimming and put some yards in? So uh, now you gotta, you're tuning in. So you're gonna um, learn some uh, things to do on dry land that you can, um, will absolutely help you when you get back in the water. Um, before starting and doing anything, I want to say, um, you guys know your limitations. It's just like I say when we do uh, Masters Swimming. You know your bodies, you know your limitations, and Masters doesn't mean you're a master of your craft, it means you're just old, and along with being old comes a lot of issues, elbows, knees, back, and you know yourself. So pay attention to your body and be mindful 
because um, we don't want you to tweak anything and then be hurt when it's time to get back in the water. Um, I want to share with you some really great books. Oh, Kathleen, you rock. Um, that I personally um, have used, and I know I've told my swimmers to use, and James, yep, James, yep, he, he reads these books too. Um, and one of them is Sheila Tormina, Swim Speed Secrets. Uh, please read this cover to cover and then keep it in your bathroom for review. You know what I mean? I know you guys are in there forever, so you can, you can, you can spend a lot of time uh, reading that. And then um, the other one is 10 Minute Toughness. Since we're out of the water, visualization is going to be so important. Uh, your brain and your body do not, it sends out the same chemicals, your brain, when you visualize something as when you actually do it. Now, are you going to be able to complete an Ironman swim just sitting on your couch visualizing it? No. But the visualization, along with dry land techniques, along with swim fitness, when we can get into the open water, is going to take you farther than you ever dreamed you could go. So this is a book I highly recommend. Um, and um, those of you who have read it, give me a thumbs up because you know it's good stuff. Yeah, Kathleen likes that one. <laughs> um, yeah, Amy Woods likes it. It's great. Yeah, see? And this is just a book that um, I just want to get all touchy-feely because I do actually care about you guys. Um, and um, this is a book just mentally stress-wise that I have found that's helped me in life and in dealing with big uh, stressful situations and it's called the book of joy and it's a collaboration between the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu and there's some beautiful meditations in this book and some beautiful ways to deal with stress and um, situations that are out of your control so uh, those are three books that I highly recommend all right I want to um, introduce you to my fabulous uh, model <laughs> besides James I'm surrounded by uh, by models besides James I have um, my fabulous husband Gary who obviously has not been to the barber in a while and his hair is starting to yeah, grow out <laughs> I, I can't even believe he let me do that yeah so uh, miss you too Pam so, um, the, so I want to talk about the, the whole um, core thing that's, I'm going to let you guys work on that on your own, but uh, like I said, we're going to cover those three things, flexibility, core, and early vertical forearm. Um, the core and the mental toughness, uh, I can um, do that at another time, um, but we're going to start with flexibility. Stretching is so important for swimming. Why? Because, as my great friend and mentor and competitor, Terry Walsh says, a tight muscle is a weak muscle. If you, um, don't, if you have a really strong muscle, like my man here, Gary, and my man James, and it is not, um, it, you don't have a range of motion for that big strong muscle, then a tight muscle is a weak muscle. So, um, if you have a uh, cord, if you want to get a cord, Gary, um, from over there, uh, I would, um, your upper body, the, the things uh, that are important to stretch are your neck, your deltoids, your lats, and your chest for swimming. So with the cord, you know, you're, you might have a belt at home, a cloth belt. So you're going to take one side of the belt, I want you to do this one. You know where you yeah, you got it. Yeah. So you're going to take one side of the belt and drape it over your shoulder. And turn it around. And yes, yeah, turn it around and then grab it with this side and then turn back around again yeah. once you got it. Now turn back around again. And um, now you're going to tilt that, tilt that neck. This way? Yeah, yeah. We get that, yeah. Do you feel that? Yep. Right in here. So that's going to get this elongated for you. So you want to pull that and stretch it. And then release nice and gentle. And then go ahead to the other side. I'll tell you on this side. Um, 
So you want to get that neck nice and loose and stretched and you want to drop those shoulders down, pull that scapula together and stretch out that. Just make that nice and long and stretch it out and don't forget to breathe. Sometimes Gary forgets to breathe. <laughs> yeah. um, so um, the other um, deltoid stretch, I would like you to um, loosen that up before we get started. And you're going to take that left arm out, hold it out nice and straight, and then pull it across your body so that you're stretching, if you turn around here, you're stretching these muscles. And these are the muscles we want to use in swimming. These are the muscles when we do the dry land exercises in a few minutes. Those are the muscles that I want you to feel. So these stretches, you're going to hold them for three to four minutes. Uh, we're running through them a little bit quicker right now because it's happy hour and you guys got to get a move on. You know what I mean? Can I add something? Mm -hmm. when, you, when you first start the stretch, don't go right to this super hard yes, stretch. Just you. go to, you'll, you'll feel just a gradual stretch. And then after maybe 40 seconds, you start loosening it up and you won't feel that stretch anymore. And then you can take a deep breath, release it and go farther into the stretch. Yeah. And then by the end of three to four minutes, you've got a good stretch going. Go, don't go jumping right to that end point with a too far of a stretch. You gotta yes. ease into it. Yeah, the, the easier you start, the deeper you'll be able to get into it. You just breathe yourself into it. So he's got, that's his delt stretch. And now um, his lats, if you would move over to that pole, I want you to do that one where you go straight back. Oh, yeah. So for his lats, I'm going to move this so you can see. Oops, can you see that? There, how are we doing? There. So for the lats, you're going to have your back parallel to the ground and thumbs up and pull straight back and l feel that. Where do you feel that, Gare? Right through. right through there, right in those lats. And once again, you're going to go to a nice, easy place and then let yourself go deeper. After about one or two minutes of this, if he's stretching his right arm, he's gonna take his right hip and tilt it towards the mat, towards the, towards the other side. So it goes a little bit deeper. So now can you go ahead and switch sides, Gare? So now he's got his left arm out, and he's gonna pull straight back. And you're actually squatting, so if he lets go of that post, he's not gonna fall backwards, but he is stretching. And then he's gonna take, he's got his left arm stretched, and he's gonna take his left hip and tilt it in the opposite direction. So those are some great lat stretches for you. Thank you, Gare. So, what else do we got? All right, so, whoop, replace, there's James again. Um, oh, the chest. So go ahead over to the wall. So all of our swimming seems to, yeah, seems to bring our chest forward and forward and forward. So this is a good stretch for your chest. So you're gonna line up, oh, let me, let me go. No, I want you there. I want so you're even with the wall, and then you you put that arm straight up. Can you start it from the yeah? So put that arm straight up. There you go. And now he's gonna step back his his um, hips and his feet and open up that chest. Can you point to where that's opening up? Right in there. And again, like Gary said, you don't want to go all the way to wow. You want to start out nice and mild, breathe into it, hold it, and then step back a tiny bit more if you can. The easier you start out on the stretch, the deeper you're going to be able to go with it. Trisha, Does that make sense? Can I, can I show yeah. you? Show? 
Put uh, my feet, and then I'll show you how to increase the stretch. Oh, uh, there you go. So to increase it, I'm just gonna angle a little bit more, and then mm -hmm. I'll do that for 45 seconds. Feel the shoulder starting to release, my pec starting to release, and then I'll step another couple of degrees. And then also, I don't know if I'm getting ahead of you, Trish, but if you drop your ear down the other side, oh yeah, it's just it adds such a great stretch. That does. That adds, and and it looks. That's the sexy shoulder stretch. Say hello, darling. No. <laughs> yeah, that definitely opens up some more. So those are some good chest uh, and, and upper body openers. Gonna, and then you go to this? No, we're not, okay. I'm not even going to go there because okay. that'll be too long. Too long, too much. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you can keep progressing with that, but I'm just going to go basic. Um, all right, so that's some upper body stretches for your... Uh, to open up your chest, to loosen up your lats, your deltoids, your neck. Um, now we're going to move on. And I will, um, I'll, I'll put this into an email that maybe Andy and Kathleen can send out to you guys because it's a lot. Um, the lower body, your ankle flexibility. I, I cannot stress it enough. We are all, so many of you, myself included, spend so many hours on the bike and so much time running. Um, <laughs> Tom, Tom Burt said we'll be drunk if you do the whole series. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Gary, can you just sit on that bench and show us what it would look like to kick with your ankles up oh. like, yeah. I just like... Where am I? So, if you see his feet are straight up, pointed up, and if you were on your stomach, that creates so much drag. Now, point your toes. How am I doing? And keep those toes pointed as much as you can. Now, show us again what it looks like when you, um, when you have them flexed. Ah, I don't have it. Yeah. So flexed ankles versus pointed ankles. Pointed, an pointed toes are going to be much faster. Even if you don't kick at all, if all you do is point your toes versus having them drag along with your toes pointed down to the bottom of the pool, you're going to be faster. So to do that, you have to work on ankle flexibility. So. Um, I'm going to have Gary behind me. Can you get that? Or maybe you hold this for me and I'll yeah, do it. I'll hold it for you. Hi. So get yourself. That's good. Right there. So get yourself a, um, a block, any kind of block, a book, or pillows. And you're going to put it down on the floor. So tilt it down. Yeah. And you're going to get your toes on top of it and then you're going to press down on your heel that's good where it is yeah and hold that again for like you know two to three minutes on each heel on each um, ankle then the other foot Can I okay yes it's a, a lot of you guys won't be starting with a block and a block that high just Show them doing it on the floor. Just um, yeah, you can just do it on the floor. Some people, that's you're gonna have to start there. Yeah. And then a kickboard, not a block that that thick. Yeah. So. So um, so those are some. And when you come out of that ankle stretch, come out of it slowly. Come out of it slowly. Um, <laughs> Mary Duchene said, "Ouch." <laughs> Yeah, because you're a runner, my girlfriend, although you are quite the swimmer now. So, uh, but yeah, the, um, and I will tell you, when you come back from a long run or a long bike ride, that ankle stretch, oh my gosh, that will do a world of good for you. Can I? Gary's can I got, do, yeah. Oh, just that ankle flexibility. I see masters in the lane next to me kicking with their ankles not flexed, and um, you can just see it dragging them. 
you will not swim fast if you don't point your toes. Yeah. So it seems like such a small thing, but the uh, the payback on doing that stretch is huge. Yes. Yeah, unless you're already flexible, but uh, a lot of the runners are not. And cyclists. Yeah. So, um, okay, so how is that? Does anybody have any questions on that piece? And And... Is it after the block? Should we do the opposite ankle stretch? Absolutely. Yes, please. <laughs> yes. You'll be swimming in circles. Yeah. Yeah, you'll be swimming in circles. That wouldn't be very helpful. Bouncing off the walls. And then you'd have to wear a helmet in the pool. So um, I'm not going to do those because I want to move on to this. Yeah. So um, how, how do you guys feel about that? Is my camera work horrible? Yes. Uh, yeah, pretty much, <laughs> right? I hope I hope things are clear. Can you give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down or a uh, I don't know happy birthday? It's a little delayed. So, um, so yeah, I hope uh, I hope that was clear. So now I'm going to go on to early vertical forearm, um, and that is I'd like you to think of early. Oh, you're doing great. Thanks, Lori. I'd like you to think of early vertical forearm. I'd like you to picture an iceberg, okay? Picture an iceberg. And the early vertical forearm, when you see a great swimmer and you're outside the pool and you're looking, you go, wow, they're really good. Wow, they're really smooth. Um, when you see that, you're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. You're just seeing the top. The recovery. The recovery stroke. And you're seeing the, the, the uh, effect of the real meat of the iceberg that's under the water, and that's the early vertical forearm. So we're going to talk about that. Sometimes you'll see it as EVF. That's the magic sauce, okay? And for that magic sauce, I want you to think of, if you can show it because your whole body's out there, yeah. Just do this lever. I want you to think of Oh. Your um, from your forearm to your fingertip as one lever. Can you show yeah, us what that looks here. like? That's one lever. So when you're moving your fingertips, you're moving your entire forearm to the wrist. It's not not it's not all wishy washy in here. This is one lever from here to here. That's your early vertical forearm right here from tip to tip. The other thing is your fingertips should be open a little bit when you're swimming, not tight in a cup, a little bit, not too wide because then water will, will just gush right through it, but right, you know, nice and nice. stiff and, and, and um, just enough so it will create a web when you're pushing through the water or pulling through the water. Um, I want you to think when you're swimming that you are going to swim with tone. You are going to have a tight core, and I like to think of it as a relaxed firmness, um, because you do need a relaxed recovery, but your recovery, but your core needs to stay strong and stay stable. That's why that core work is so important, and that's, again, something you can work on every single day, and it'll make you better when you hit, hit the water again. So, um, so the important thing before we even start the early vertical forearm is to realize it's a lever from fingertip to elbow, okay? And when I say move your fingertips, you're moving the whole forearm. And if you notice, when I do that, notice that internal shoulder rotation. And when Gary does that, there's a shoulder rotation. It's like I don't know. The yes, camera's not gonna it, show. It does it face the face it. Notice how that shoulder comes right up and hugs his little cheekbones there. So you should be feeling that when you do your early vertical forearm. The other thing is, can you do that again, Gare? When you do that, I want your elbow not to move. That, the then you're going to feel that shrug, okay? So um, I'm going to, to do that, I want you to picture, to get that early vertical forearm correct. Now he's standing, so, but we're going to pretend we're in the water. So I want you to picture you have a cardboard box. So Gary's going to hold that cardboard box up. And 
you're placing your arm right on top of that cardboard box there. Pick it up. Yeah. So you're placing that arm. And notice how his elbow doesn't move. Can you do that again? Notice how his elbow's not moving. And he's using, he's placing the whole lever on top of that box. And that, it, it, it requires that shoulder, that, that rotation, that shoulder shrug. And if you can't do that, go back to the stretches. You gotta, yeah. you gotta have that shoulder flexibility to be able to keep that elbow up. Yeah. So that's how you're, when we talk about early vertical forearm, that's what we're talking about. So when you're swimming in the water, we're gonna get that early vertical forearm and the water, you're going to be pressing water with that whole lever. Um, yes. Um, the stretches for early vertical forearm. Um, anything that opens up your shoulders, your chest, that's why that um, chest stretch is so good because the more open your chest is and the, um, the more uh, flexible your neck is, the better that's going to get. Um, one other good, this is a stretch you'll do every time you swim, if you do it right, when you come off the wall yes. and you, you do that um, streamline, it requires that same shoulder rotation. Some people, some triathletes don't worry about their turns and they think, oh, that's not helping me. But um, if you come off that wall with that streamline, the proper streamline, it takes, it takes some shoulder flexibility. If you do, you know, 200 turns a workout, you're, you're doing that little stretch 200 times. Yeah, and, um, and even if, if you just walk around like yeah. this or hold that stretch, you know, do that for a minute to two minutes and then loosen up and do it again because that'll create uh, that flexibility here. And some of you may be trying it right now. You put one hand on top of the other, wrap this thumb here, this thumb here. So one hand on top of the other, and you want, this is where you want to get with it, but some of you may be just getting here. And it doesn't mean you're never going to get here. When I first started doing that, I was like here. Now it's here. So it is something that you can, you can get better at. Yeah. So, um, so that was a good question. Um, so what else? Okay, so I think we're ready to do some of the band things. If anybody else has any more questions on that early vertical forearm and, and that. Um, the other thing, Tom, that other good question, that is a good question about that. Um, any exercises to, I'm going to have Gary turn around, that will um, strengthen these. Yeah. The more you can get... Um, these muscles in here strengthened, the better. Um, and some of the, I, gosh, I could do a whole thing of just shoulder flexibility stretching. So if you guys want to invite me back for that one, I, I, I have a whole, basically a PT routine that I do for that um, because that will create more space in your front and that will allow this so, anything, anybody else have another question? Because I'm going to move on to the um, bands, if you have them, and um, show that one. All right. Yes, love that, please. Okay. So, um, if you have, I wonder if I, yeah. If you have, um, tell me how, can you see it? Yeah, but you're going to, yeah. If you have some bands, that's great, and you have a place to put them. We have them on a um, banister. You know, you have your basement where there's the pole in the basement, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so there's, uh, they do sell bands with the handles on them. So those can, uh, those are great, but you don't have to have them with the handles on them. You can have, a, um, you know, improvise and make it work. Um, so what I would say is the first thing you want to work on is early vertical forearm. So when you're working on that, so go ahead and do just one arm, Gare. Oh, is it on you? Yeah. So you're doing one arm at a time, and 
you're going to start out, um, sorry, Garrett, just leave it up high and straight, straight up, yeah. That's our position 11, that's our start. And then do three sets of 10 of these. One, two, three, four. Just early vertical forearm. We're not gonna finish the stroke. Five, six, seven. We're not even finishing the stroke. Eight, nine, 10. Now for our purposes tonight, we're only gonna do one set. Um, can you do the other side, yeah. Gare? And Tell them, you want, you want to do the swimming, but if you need to, v visually check it. I'm going to yes. put this arm down just so they yes. can see it. Yeah, and for this, you want and to practice good head position. Look. Right. Stop, take a look. Make sure you got good early vertical forearm. Now, Gary's got one wrist that is better than the other because he broke his wrist when he was um, skateboarding when he was a little kid. So this wrist is not as flush as the other one, and that's why, because of his... But you can see his elbow is up nice and high. Good. You ready to take a break? Yeah. So that's early vertical forearm. You can do, I would start out, do three sets of 10 of those uh, on each arm. One set uh, on one arm, then the other, and then go back and do you know, three sets of 10. And check. It, I, would, I tell my swimmers, do it in front of a mirror if you can. Because the idea of this is you have the opportunity on dry land to practice setting up a great early vertical forearm. And you don't have to worry about not drowning. You don't have to worry about breathing. You don't have to worry about all that other stuff. This is your opportunity to work on that form. So make sure you're doing it in front of a mirror and you're doing it well because we're, you're going to progress the exercises going forward. Um, should you use your shoulder also? The idea of that early vertical forearm and pressing straight back is that you're not using this shoulder, the smaller shoulder muscle, you're using your lats. the lats. Yeah. So, and that's a really good question. But, but up till now, this part of the, the drill you really haven't, the only thing you've done with your shoulder is, is that internal rotation to mm -hmm. get your, to keep yeah. your elbow in that position. And now we're going to add in kind of the work, the press. Uh, and I'm so glad you asked that question because that's where having the lever is so important and pushing, you want to, to oh, make this. sure you're pushing with all this and especially this wrist. If you are this area, if you're just pressing, go ahead and press, Garrett, with just your fingertips. And you guys can do it at home. Press with just your fingertips on the table, and you'll feel your shoulder is working. Uh, uh, we don't want shoulder problems. My shoulder problems did not come from swimming. They came from crashing and cyclocross, <laughs> just so you know. So, um, But if, use my hand. If, he, if he pushes, when, and you guys can take your hand on the table and move it onto your wrist and press there and you can feel now can feel look at his you can even see his lats engage yeah. that's where you want your strength and your power to come from in swimming not from your shoulders but from your lats lats is big muscle compared to these teeny tiny shoulder muscles yeah so um that was a good question so you're gonna do three sets of ten of just early vertical forearm just early vertical forearm then, once you feel like you've got that down, you're gonna do three sets of 10 of the full stroke. So Gary's gonna go ahead and do that for us. But in doing that full stroke, how am I doing, Gary? Are you the, on? The no, look first, at me. Look at the camera. Uh, higher. Higher. The first thing I'll do to start, though, is I find that early vertical yes. form. So I'll do one or two of those, and then I just add in the whole stroke and finish it and if you notice if you can see his lats are really engaged a little higher I think. if you can see his lats are really engaged and you keep that elbow high the whole way through the so. whole way through there you go and look at how stiff 
his um, that lever is all the way from his fore, from his elbow down to his fingertips. Okay, because again, if you are using that whole lever, you're engaging your lats. If you're just uh, slipping through or you're pressing with just fingertips, you're you know, working your shoulders or you're missing water. So. And the, uh, the, you can get a great workout using bands and you can increase your strength and gain some fitness, but make your first couple weeks uh, technique focus. You're always focused on your technique, but don't start doing that full stroke until you're consistently finding that early vertical forearm. Yes, that's a very good point. If all you do for the next two weeks is work on early vertical forearm, oh my gosh, and then after two weeks progress to the full stroke, you will be solid. And oh my gosh, Tom Burt, that is a great question. Thank you. Um, Tom said, well, we ignore the recovery phase during that drill, correct? And yes, that is correct. Thank you for reminding me. Um, when you press straight back and then when you recover your arm is going to follow the same path um, back just, to, just for the purposes of the, the drill the just for the drill because you don't want to recover up like this nope. you'll hurt your shoulders yeah. uh, how many times a week should we do these I would say three times a week um, it, it would be great give yourself a day of recovery um, and I would say three by ten early vertical forearm, uh, right, 10 on each side, right arm, left arm, and then three times 10 full stroke, right arm, left arm. So I would say for the first week, that, that's, gonna, that's gonna keep you covered pretty well and it's gonna, God, it's such, such a great pattern for you if you can get that early vertical forearm set. Um, after you feel like you have that set, in the second week, or when you're ready. Um, I, I was just watching a video where she talked about um, putting the power or the oops in the front of your stroke. Um, so when you do that early vertical forearm, that's, that's not a good, that early vertical forearm, that's good. you wanna oh, the, the, get some oomph, because I mean, we wanna go fast, right people? You want power. So first set the pattern of your early vertical form. Make sure you've got that. Then once you've got that and you've been doing the bands for a week or two weeks and you feel like you've got that, then you can focus on early vertical form and snap it through, snap it through, snap it through. And I'm telling you, you do that and you will feel exhausted in these, oh, yeah. in your lats. Um, so then you can, do that same, you know, warm up, do a nice and easy three by 10, early vertical forearm, three by 10, full stroke, and then go to three by 10, add that in where you, uh, an, another three by 10, where you're adding the oomph in the front, the power in the front, snap it through, um, because that's gonna give you acceleration. If you can imagine you're in the water and you snap it, that's gonna give you acceleration. Um, so does that make sense? I hope so. It's delayed, so. Um, and then I would say three weeks out or when you feel like, you know, you've set your early vertical forearm, you're finishing your stroke all the way to the end. Your fingertips are down the entire way. And then you're following that path, same path back. When you feel like you have that early vertical forearm, you feel like you're uh, finishing your stroke, you feel like you've got that oomph in the front, then you can start to add in workouts with your band that are a little bit longer. You warm up with the technique and like we were doing, you know, th three sets of 10 early vertical forearm. And then make it like a swimming set after your warm up. Maybe you'll do 
whatever you do a 50 in, maybe a minute, maybe 45 seconds. So you're gonna do maybe three sets of six by one minute, you know, where you're actually doing it as a catch up. You're actually swimming, you know, and set yourself a little timer, do um, three by one minute or with uh, 15 seconds rest or um, three by 30 seconds with you know, 30 seconds rest. You get a lot of rest, but you're putting a lot of oomph in the front of the stroke. And then always warm down like we do in the pool with good technique. Can I add one thing? Yeah. The, um, the band you should be using, it's, it's a very light resistance. Yes, I mean, yeah. that's... You don't, want, you don't want something you're doing lunges with or anything. It's a, it's a light band and only step back far enough so that you're just getting a little bit of resistance on it. And then maybe three weeks later, you step back a little bit farther and, and make it more of a strength thing. But for just getting the technique, you really don't need that much of a uh, resistance. You just want enough to, to kind of feel something pressing against your hand. Not much more than that. Yeah, so it is, it's all about technique. Swimming, it's like golf. You know, you can stand over that golf ball and go, I'm going to slam it. And that's a sure way that it'll just trickle off the tee like, <laughs> two feet or go into the woods uh, swimming it, it, it in golf it's it's how well do you make contact with that ball and it's the same thing with swimming it's how well are you setting yourself up to get the most distance out of every stroke and Karen's asking how many times a week to do it I would say three, but uh, if you weren't swimming three times a week, maybe you shouldn't be doing this three times a week. Um, Tom Burt swims, he, I don't know, he, a I think he's seven, 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 day, seven days a week, so he <laughs> could probably jump right in and do seven days a week, but th three is a good number. Um, so, um, does anybody have any questions on those? I hope it was like simple to understand and something, because it's, the, I'm telling you, I, um, I want to go back and reiterate what we said in the beginning. You literally, most swimmers on the Cape, there are, uh, with, with very few exceptions, um, I know some swimmers that are just uh, amazing, but those are very few. Uh, most swimmers, including myself, can make more gains in their living room working on technique than they can swimming thousands of yards in a pool trying to gain that fitness. And I know everyone's stressing about no pools and the water's too cold for open water, but like I said earlier, this could be the best thing that ever happened to you swimming because it's gonna make you focus on swimming. It's gonna make you read Swim Speed Secrets by Sheila Tormina, and it's gonna make you get a mental toughness plan and it's going to make you read the book of joy and, and then you'll be more of a pleasure when you do show up for swimming. Yeah. <laughs> is it normal to feel like one arm is really awkward when doing this? Absolutely. Yes. yes. And sometimes it's my left arm and um, I, I've gotten more even as, as I do these. And sometimes the, the arm that's weaker or more awkward, I'll actually do an extra set on that arm to try to bring it up to speed and I, I do that all the time with my left arm and it's actually getting better um, if you uh, you know th this will help you build strength and balance um, and I, I would suggest adding another set to that weaker or more awkward side uh, so how's that was that too long did I cheers I cannot wait to get back in the water with you guys and uh, do some. On that note, be safe. Swimming. I know. I know all you crazy triathletes want to get out open water swimming <laughs> and um, and tell your crazy story about how you did it when it was forty nine degrees. But be safe out there, mm -hmm. um, because by the time we get in the open water, you you probably will not have swam for six, seven, eight weeks. Yeah. And it's going to be cold water. Keep them short. Keep them uh, close. And always and swim with a buddy. Always swim with a buddy and have a uh, swim safe buoy with you. If you need some, I do have some here. I can leave it out on my 
uh, front uh, porch and you can just leave me a check. If not, I'll hunt you down like a dog. Uh, all right, love you guys. Let me know if you have uh, any luck, questions. Everybody. You know where to find me. Bye. You want to wait, let it go for a few seconds. It was the hairy redhead in the corner of the frame. <laughs> uh, um, thank you. Thanks for coming. Oh, I hope it was helpful. Thanks.